talk about a few things uh, on how we describe or how we embed objects in uh, basically how do we describe objects mathematically. If I have an object, how can I describe its motion or its deformation mathematically? So the first thing we do with an object is we say we embed the object in a three-dimensional vector space. By embedding the object in a three-dimensional space, we imagine that I have a space with vectors and that the object in, in the physical world it has different material points. In the mathematical world, each material point is represented by a vector. There are vectors that represent the material or the object, and there are vectors that do not represent this object. The set of objects, the, the set of vectors that represent the object, the set of vectors that represent the object, is a subset of R3. It's not the whole R3, it's just a subset of it. And this subset is called a configuration of the object. A configuration because when I move the object, I'm going to get another set. If I move the object from here, here, I'm going to get another set of vectors that represent the object. When I move this set to another location, I have a new set that represents the object, and this new set is called another configuration. This configuration gives me the uh, certain configuration of that wire, or that line on. There's another configuration for that wire where each point has three components. So I'm going to call this X. X is equal to three components, X1 x2, x3 but these components are actually vary according to how far I am on the object so you can think of it as x1 of t x2 of t and x3 of t where t varies from 0 
the configuration omega is equal to the set of vectors x of t defined by x1, x2, and x3, whatever those functions are, where t varies from 0 to l. The reason why I'm interested in line objects, because usually when I look at strain, I look at strain in line objects, I look at the extension of lines. And this line object is represented by what we call a one parameter family of vectors. Why is it one parameter? Because it's a function of only one parameter, t, which could be the length along that line. It's one parameter. You tell me what the value of the parameter is. I tell you what the location of that point is. So in general, what we're interested in is the ball. I have an object that's represented by a family of vectors called omega naught. And I would like to know how this object deformed in space. The objective of any continuum or solve mechanics problem is where does this object go after I deform it or after I apply loads. I want to predict the future from my current configuration. I have a current for reference configuration for that object where every point is represented by a vector. I call it capital X, and capital X has three components, X1, X2, and X3. And I would like to find how this object changes and attains a new configuration called omega. And now, then in the new configuration, the vector representing the material points, points is called small x, and X1, X2, and X3. It has three components, X1, X2, and X3. And the objective of uh, any analysis is to find this mapping function f. This mapping function f tells me, okay, if this is your point before configuration, after uh, before movement or before applying any loads or any boundary conditions, this is the point after application of load and after application of your uh, boundary conditions. And this f in most applications is a bijective function. What does bijective function mean? We'll talk about this in a sec. It's bijective and smooth. But before we uh, discuss this, just the terminology, f takes a vector x in the reference configuration and gives me a new vector, small x, in the deformed configuration such that the new x is equal to f of x. It's a function of the original point. The original point is here, now the original point is here, x is a function of the original uh, place, and the displacement vector, how each point moved, the vector is equal to the new position, always minus the old position f of capital X minus the original X. That gives me a vector field. Why is it a vector field? Because it depends on which point I'm interested in. If I'm interested in this point, I know it's capital X, I know it's small x, x minus capital X gives me the displacement right at this point. So it's a field, u is defined on omega naught to R3. Because for every point in the deformed configuration, I know a vector. And this vector represents how much this point has deformed. Now this f that I'm looking for, in most applications, is both bijective and smooth. What does it mean bijective and smooth? Bijective means I cannot use this to model something like that. 
the principles of solid mechanics cannot be used to model something like this, where objects change their neighbors, or, or material points change their neighbors, and change contact. Because now F is not continuous. As this point approaches this point, and this point approaches an empty spot. So for something like this, if you want to model particles moving with respect to each other, you can either look at each particle as a continuum on its own and try to define the interaction between them. Otherwise, you cannot just use a continuum approach to try to understand how this became this. If you're using the continuum or the solid assumption, you're not able to model something like this unless you look at each region independently. Another thing, you cannot use the principles that we're going to talk about to try and understand flattening a block. If you have a block and you flatten that block such that now it has a thickness of zero, you're not able, this is not bijective, you are not able to find f minus one because for this point you have a whole line. So the, the principles that we're doing here cannot be used for something like this. Another important thing is cracks. A lot of people model cracks, but it really requires special uh, attention if you want to say, okay, well, I have a crack here, and I want to find or to build a model that can predict that the crack extended that way. And you actually model it after extension. The problem with something like this is that as you extend the crack, you're going to lose uh, the continuity, actually the bijectivity of the function, and you're going to have an issue, mathematically speaking, on at the new interface. Because at the new interface, you, were, you will have some... Uh, mathematically speaking, you are going to have to create two points that correspond to an initially one point. So basically you created a new material point. By creating a crack, you created a new material point because you created a whole surface. And so for cracks and things like this, there is very special, it's very special, uh, if you, for example, using finite element analysis to model cracks, you actually build an element and another element and then sticks them together and then wait for them to open. So you start with an initial crack and then you extend it. So there's a difference between trying to know where the crack goes and or using the... So, so basically if you're dealing with cracks, you have to be very careful when you're using the principles of solid or continuum mechanics. Okay, so let's look at simple deformed configurations. Okay, one, one thing first. If you have two objects together that are glued at an interface, you can relax the assumption of smoothness at the interface. So you're looking for F1, and you're looking for another F2, and you can relax the smoothness at the interface between the two options. Because F will not be differentiable at this location. But it still has to be continuous. By continuous, I mean I cannot develop graphs. So examples of simple motions. The first one is rigid body displacement. If I have an object here, and this object <coughs> is translated to omega such that x is equal to the original x plus a vector c independent of x, 
this material point, or this material point, or this material point, they're all moved the same C, then this is called a rigid body displacement or translation. And F of X, which is equal to X, is equal to X plus C. These are all vectors. X, X, and C are vectors. And the displacement is equal to the new position, minus the old position, which is equal to C. So the vector C gives me that constant field, because it's constant at every material point. U is the vector field representing the displacement of the object. A rigid body rotation is described by this is the object. vector x describing is an element of omega naught. Omega naught is a subset of R3. This is what I call reference configuration. In a deformed configuration or in a different configuration, all of those material points shifted by rotation. such that the new vector x is equal to q multiplied by x. x is an element of the new configuration. The configuration is a subset of R3, the deformed configuration. In this case, x, the new position is equal to qx. It's a matrix. This is a rotation matrix. This is a vector. So this is equal to so the displacement, which is a vector, is equal to the new position minus the old position. The new position is equal to q x minus x, which is equal to q minus i multiplied by x. For example, one, u2, u3 would be equal to cosine theta minus one, sine theta zero, negative sine theta, cosine theta minus one, zero, 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 one, multiply by x1, x2, x3. Give me the original position, and I will tell you the new position, with, which is just the function of this theta. or any other rotation matrix, so this is q minus i, or any other q minus i would work. And if you, in your book, there are many examples, but there are a few examples, and there are some Mathematica, if you copy the Mathematica code and paste it in your browser, you can see that objects actually transform. Rigid body motion, to look at rigid body motion, sorry, rigid body motion is nothing but a combination of both. Translation, then rotation, the new position x is equal to a rotation plus a translation. The displacement is equal to the new position minus the old position, qx plus c minus capital X, q minus i x plus a vector c. q is a rotation matrix, c is a vector, and of course x X is an element of the deformed configuration. Capital X is an element of the undeformed or reference configuration. The next uh, two types are 
uniform extension and contraction, the previous very simple uh, movements rely on the rotation or translation. There is no associated, I should not expect any associated strains. No, because I have not moved the materials with respect to each other. The, the, the vectors, the material points have maintained the same distances between each other. If I start now moving the objects with each other, I will get uh, strains. And the simple example is, the simplest example is when I uniformly extend the object, so this is the object before extension, <coughs> and after extension, it has uniformly, uniformly increased or decreased in length in the three directions. Uniformly increased or decreased in length, that means if this is small capital X, an element of the original or the deform undeformed configuration, and x is an element of the deformed configuration, x, x1, the horizontal component, is a factor multiplied by capital X1. x2 is a factor multiplied by x2. x3 is a factor multiplied by x3. The vector x is equal to a matrix k1, 0, 0, 0, k2, 0, 0, 0, k3. And if I assume that the orientation is preserved, then those k1s and k2s and k1 and k2 and k3, if the object maintains the same position, k1 is equal to k2 is equal to k3 is equal to 1. If the object is compressed, k1 is less than 1, but greater than 0. If the object is extended, then k1 will be greater than 1. And the new position, uh, so the, the displacement is equal to x minus x. If I call this matrix M, so this is M minus i multiplied by the vector x. is described as it's described as a shearing angle along a certain direction and perpendicular to another direction so simple shearing movement is described as shearing angle in a certain direction and perpendicular to another direction and for this we assume x2 so this is x1 x2 x3 it's an element of the original configuration the new point X1 moved horizontally, X1 plus X2 and theta, where this is theta. And for this, Say that x is equal to the matrix 1 and theta 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 
zero, zero, one, zero, 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 one, multiplied by x1, x2, x3. And if I call this matrix M, then u is equal to M minus I multiplied by the vector x. And so in the next chapter, what we're going to do is we're going to take all of those matrices, relationships between the small x and the capital X, and the, 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 green, the, the vector u, which tells me the, the, the field of displacement within an object. And I'm going to take all these things and give you the strain matrices and the information matrices and try to understand when has an object been formed and when does it have strain and when it does not have any strain. So the next assignment is due next week as well, same time. And uh, next week we'll continue.